Here are some problems related to external combustion engine. Guided problem solving number one. An ideal Stirling engine using helium as the working fluid operates between temperature limits of 300 and 2000 Kelvin and pressure limits of 1500 kPa and 3 MPa. Assuming the mass of the helium used in the cycle is 0.12 kg, determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle, the amount of heat transfer in the regenerator, and the work output per cycle. So here is the PV diagram. As you can see here, we are operating with temperature limits of 300 Kelvin. And since our temperature at point 0.3 and 4, that is equals to the lower temperature limit, that is equals to 300 Kelvin and our high temperature limit is equals to T1 and T2 and that is 2000 Kelvin. For the pressure limits, the lowest pressure is given as 150 megapascal and that means our 0.3 is 0.15 megapascal and the highest temperature is the 0.1 with 3 megapascal. So regeneration happens between 2 to 3 or 1 to 4. The heat input happened at the high, the isothermal process, 1 to 2. And the rejection of heat happens at isothermal process, to 3 to 4. So for the thermal efficiency of the cycle, for Stirling, Erickson, and Brighton cycle, we can use the Carnot cycle efficiency as our definition of thermal efficiency of this reversible cycles. Assuming that helium is an ideal gas with constant specific heats, we first determine the specific heats and gas constant of helium using table A2 and the value R shown here. So first we are to determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle. And by definition, that is equals to 1 minus TL over TH. So substituting the value of TL and TH, our thermal efficiency is 85%. The amount of heat transfer in the regenerator. So we determine the amount of heat transfer in the regenerator. And that is equals to our Q region is equals to M uh, internal energy at point 0.1 minus internal energy at Point two, or that is equal to MCV T1 minus T4. So we will use this formula since we are not given with T1 and T2, uh, U1 and U2, but we can get T1 and T4. This one is T4, not T2, uh, U4, not U2. So substituting the value of CV from the given and that from the property of helium and T1 and T4, T1 is equals to 2000 Kelvin. This is a constant temperature process. T4 is 300 Kelvin. So our mass is also given from the give, from our problem as 0.12 kilogram. So our Q region is 635.6 kilojoules. So this is the amount of heat transferred in the regenerator. So this is how we obtain the value of the specific heat of helium using table A-2 at 300 kilo Kelvin. So we assume that the gas constant are constant. So we can use the gas constant specific heat CPN, CV as well as the value of K4 helium. The work output per cycle first, we can observe based on our previous calculations that our thermal efficiency is related to work net using this relationship. Thermal efficiency is equal to our desired over, over our required. So our desired is the work net and then our um, out input is the heat input. So that's why we can get work net as thermal efficiency times Q in by rearranging this equation. So if we solve for Q in using the isothermal process one to two, since Q in happens here. For isothermal process, you can use 
this relationship Q in, Q in for ideal gas as MTH delta S. And our delta S is equal to the change of entropy from 1 to 2. So for the change of entropy relationship, it is based, uh, we can write it in this equation. Delta S is equal to CV ln T2 over T1 plus R ln V2 over V1, where V2 over V1 is equal to the volume or specific volume. So from the combined gas law, we can write relationship between uh, pressure and temperature as this one. So for process, um, for example, we have process 1 to 3 or where we assume now that there, uh, the, relation, the relationship are constant between process 1 to 3. Then T1, V1 over T1 is equals to T3, V3 over T3. So, if we rearrange this one, our V3 can, V3 over V1 is just equals to T3 over P1, T3, P1 over T1, T3. And since for Stirling engine, our V3 is equals to V2, then we can replace V3 here with V2 so that it will become V2 over V1 is equal to T3, P1 over T1, T3. So we use this so that we can use the given T3, T1, T1, and T3. So for the work output per cycle, if we substitute all of this, if we substitute our Q in, which is MTH delta S, so we have MTH and delta S. This entire uh, quantity here refers to our delta S, which is this one. And since our V2 over V1 is equals to T3 P1 over T1 T3, so we replace it also. And then we have our thermal efficiency here. So we can see that all of these are already given and solved. So we can substitute all those values. So that our work net is 465.5 kilojoules. So that is how we analyze an ideal Stirling engine when we have a constant specific heats. Guided problem solving number two. So this one is similar to guided problem solving number one. It's just that we have English units. So this is um, Ericsson engine. So we have an ideal Ericsson engine. We have helium as a working fluid operating between temperature limits of 550 and 3000 Ronkine and a pressure limit of 25 and 200 PSI. We assume the mass flow rate to be 14 ton mass per second. So we are to determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle, the heat transfer rate in the regenerator and the power delivered. So this is the PV diagram for an Ericsson engine. We have process one to two is where our Heat addition happens at constant temperature or isothermal process, and that is given as 3,000 rank time. So after that, it um, it undergoes uh, regeneration here, one to four and two to three, where there is an where there is a transfer of heat from two to three to three, four to one, and because of that, this happens at a constant pressure of 25 psia until it reaches point three. Then at point three, it releases heat at constant temperature TL and that is 550 round uh, time. And then at point four, so it exchange again with, uh, there's a regeneration happens here between one to four and one, three to two to three to reach point two to complete the cycle. So we assume that helium is an ideal gas with constant specific heats and for English units, we use table A-2E. So the value of the specific heat and gas constant are as follows. So first for the thermal efficiency, we use the same formula, one minus TL over TH. And this time this is wrong kind, it's not Kelvin. So it should be wrong kind. So our thermal efficiency is 81.67%. For the amount of heat transfer in the regenerator, that is just equals to M H1 minus H2. So M H1 minus H2. And since we don't have value of enthalpy, we will use the temperature and that can be written as TP T1 minus T4. So our Curie gen, uh, if since we are given with the mass of 14 pound mass per second, 
and our CP is given us in the table as 1.25 and T1 is our TH, our T4 is equal to TL. So that our Q regen is 42,875 BTU per second. So this is how we get the value for the specific heat and gas constant for helium at table A to E. Next, we have the power delivered. So the work output per cycle can be written as using this equation. So a work that is a thermal efficiency times Q in. So we need to solve first for Q in at process one to two, and that is just equals to M T H delta S. Our change of entropy can be written in this form. And then from the combined gas law, our V2 over V1, we can write that in terms of T. Since we don't have V, but we are given with T, that's why we transform it into T. So V2 over V1 is equal to P1 over P2, so we can replace this later on with P1 over P2. So that our work output can be written as this formula. So here we have M. TH and this one represents our delta S. Our V2 over V1 is now P1 over P2 and then we have thermal efficiency. Since all of these are already given, we can substitute. And thus our work net is 35,385.7 BDU per second. So that is how we analyze an ideal Ericsson engine. As you can see, they have um, high thermal efficiency. Guided problem solving number three. So we are given here with the uh, data for uh, from the boiler. So we are to create as an eight item heat balance for the boiler with the following specification. So we're given with the analysis of coal, the fuel. This one is the fuel in percent by mass. So we have this, we have the ultimate analysis and then we have the proximate analysis. So the ultimate analysis, uh, it includes the analysis in terms of Chon sum, a carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, nitrogen, and ash. And the proximate analysis uh, includes ash, moisture, volatile component, and then we have the fixed carbon. And then the, for the flue gas or the gases that leaves the exhaust, this is the, or the chimney, this is the analysis of the gas we have carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, oxygen, nitrogen. And the operating conditions of the boiler are also given. The steam is 3.5 megapascal. Our steam temperature is also given. The water entering the boiler, this is our feed water, is 160 degrees Celsius. Our enthalpy of steam leaving the boiler is HS. Enthalpy of water entering the boiler is HFW. The actual water evaporated is also given the coal fired, the amount of coal fired or the mass of the fuel. So that's 10,100 kilograms per hour. The refuse collected in the ash pit. The refuse refers to the components of our fuel that won't um, in, uh, involved in the combustion. That's also given as well as combustible content of the refuse, the amount of carbon, the heating value of coal, the heating volume com combustible in the refuse, the temperature of the flue gases, the temperature of the fuel entering the furnace, temperature of combustion air, the specific heat of flue gas, relative humidity of atmospheric air, the, um, the amount of oxygen and the atmosphere by mass are given. So we are going to use this data to do the eight item heat balance. So first, we determine the heat absorbed by the steam generator. So this is the, the useful um, heat among the heats here. So this is the one that is being absorbed by the steam generator. And that is that can be uh, solved using this formula. So Q1 is equal to mass of the steam times the change of enthalpy of the water divided by mass of the, the fuel. So that our result is per kilogram of the fuel uh, that is combusted in the combust in the furnace. So we know we need to solve first for the enthalpy of the steam. We are given with the temperature and the pressure of the steam in the table. 
So we are going to solve for the enthalpies. So we are sure that this is a superheated vapor. So using steam table, our HS is 3,225.04 kilojoules per kilogram. For the fed water, we can use the steam table at the temperature. So uh, we can approximate the enthalpy using HF at the given temperature of the feed water, which is 160. So we're given so our HW 675.58. So substituting the value, so our the mass of the fuel is given in the table as well as the mass of the steam. So we just substitute the enthalpy so that our Q1 is 20,113.8 kilojoules per kilogram of fuel. So this is the heat absorbed by the steam generator. Second is um, the remaining heats are the waste heat. So the first one is a uh, heat loss due to the dry flue gases. So as you may know, the gases in the chimney, they carry heat. And the amount of heat is given as MDG, CPG, PG minus C. So MDG is the mass of the dry gas. CPG is the specific heat of the gas. PG is the temperature of the flue gas. CA is the temperature of the air. Since we do not have the MDG yet on the table, but we can solve that using this formula. So the mass of the dry flue gas can be solved using this formula here. So we just substitute the, the data from the flue gas. So the analysis of the flue gas in terms of carbon dioxide, monoxide is given in also. And then the mass of the fuel, CF, um, uh, CR and MF are also given in the table. So we just substitute those values. So take note that here we can use, um, we can use, we should use non-decimal or it's um, percentage equivalent. So th this value here should be in its percentage equivalent for us to get the correct MDG. So that our MDG is 12.2 kilogram dry gas per kilogram of fuel. So now that we have MDG, we just substitute those um, given already, the PG and CA are already given in the table as well as the CPG. So that our heat carried by the flow gases or the chimney gases is 2,735.48 kilojoules per kilogram of fuel. Next is the heat loss due to the evaporation of moisture by the combustion of hydrogen. So the, the, the evaporation of moisture because of the inclusion of the combustion of oxygen also carry heat. That is, um, that can be written based on this formula that can be computed using this formula we have 9h2 multiplied by the quantity here where we need to solve first for the actual hydrogen and the fuel the actual hydrogen and the fuel or that is h2 is the hydrogen and the ultimate analysis minus the moisture in the fuel divided by nine so we need to deduct the oxygen the hydrogen that um that is in the fuel and that is so from the ultimate analysis we're given with the amount of hydrogen is 5.22 percent so in decimal is 0.0523 the moisture is 0.059 based on the um approximate analysis so we just plug in those values so that our h2 is 0.0467 kilogram per kilogram of fuel. So the kilogram of hydrogen per kilogram of fuel. So using superheated steam table, our H prime prime is equal to the enthalpy at 0.01 megapascal and 250 degrees Celsius. And that is 2,974.17 kilojoules per kilogram. So our 250 degrees Celsius here is the Tg and this 0.01 megapascal is constant. So we use, we get each prime prime using the 
this constant enthalpy and the temperature of gas, which is 250 degrees Celsius. So that our H prime prime is 2974.17 kilojoules per kilogram. Using saturated steam table, we get HF prime. HF prime is equal to HF at the temperature of air, that is 28 uh, degrees Celsius. And that is 117.38 kilojoules per kilogram. So our Q3, if you plug in all the values, is just equals to 1,200.71 kilojoules per kilogram. So this is the heat loss due to the evaporation of moisture by the combustion of hydrogen. Next is to determine the heat loss due to the evaporation of moisture in the U well. So this time we just multiply H prime prime and H F prime with the mass of the um, moisture, the moisture content. So the moisture in the fuel is given in the analysis of the fuel and that is 5.09%. So the moisture in decimal is 0 0.0509. So we just multiply H prime prime minus H F prime so that our heat loss due to the evaporation of moisture in the fuel is 145.41 kilojoules per kilogram of fuel. Next is we determine the heat loss due to the incomplete combustion of the fuel. So there is a tendency of the fuel to not uh, to undergo incomplete combustion and we can calculate the heat loss due to that incomplete combustion using this relationship. So CO here, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are the based on the analysis of the fuel gases. So our C1, on the other hand, is the actual amount of carbon that is burned. So the actual amount of carbon that is burned is just equals to this relationship. So MF is the mass of the fuel, CF is the carbon content of the fuel based on the analysis of the fuel, MR is the mass of the refuse, CR is the carbon content in the refuse, and we just use the values in the given. So we substitute MF, CF, and MR, CR so that our C1 or the amount of carbon that is not burned is uh, that is burned is 0 0.6974. So substituting also the value of the analysis of the flue gases here. So our heat loss due to the incomplete combustion of the fuel is 340.96 kilojoules per kilogram of the fuel. Next is to determine the heat loss due to the unburned combustible in the ash heat. So there's still unburned combustible in the ash heat and that can be computed using this formula. So 33830 here refers to the higher heating value. So it also depends on the given. So we're given with a higher heating value based on the given as 3830. So we use it here. And we multiply with this uh, M mass of the refuse over the mass of the fuel times the amount of carbon that is burned. Uh, the amount of um, carbon in the refuse. So we just uh, substitute the value so CR should be in um, decimal so our Q6 or the, the heat loss due to unburned combustible in the ash pit is 699.38 kilojoules per kilogram of the fuel next is the heat loss due to the moisture in the air supply so as you can see there's still a uh, heat loss due to the moisture of air supply and that can be computed using MV CPTG minus CA so MV here refers to the mass of the moisture in the air, and that is MV. So the moisture in the air is equal to the humidity ratio HV multiplied by the mass of actual air. Using psychometric chart, we can use the HV or the moisture in air at the given um, relative humidity as well as the temperature of air. So these values are given so we have the temperature of air and the relative humidity of air. So that using the psychometric chart, we intersect the value so that our moisture 
in the air is equal to 0.09 kilogram vapor per kilogram of dry air. This is also termed as humidity ratio. The actual air supplied can be computed using this formula. So N2, CO2, and CO are the flue gases. And C1 has been computed already from the previous um, unknown. So we just substitute those values so that our mass of actual air is 11.85 kilogram dry air per kilogram of fuel. So we can use now our formula so that we can get the value of MV. So our MV is 0.2249 kilogram vapor per kilogram of the fuel. So substituting also the value of CP. So if you're not given with a specific heat of the vapor, we use this one. But if it is given, you should use the given value. So our Q7 is 0.2249 multiplied by the other quantities. So that our Q7 is 96.15 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's a little amount of heat loss. And for the heat loss due to the radiation and all other losses, since this is an unaccounted loss, uh, there's no direct way of solving this. So we will just sum all of the heat and we subtract all of those values from the higher heating value. So the higher heating value or the amount of the, the total amount of heat from the fuel is 30,430 kilojoules per kilogram. So if this is not given, you need to use Dulong's formula. But if it's given, just use the given. So the, here are the sums of masses from 1 to 7 so that our heat loss due to radiation and other losses is 2,098.11 kilojoules per kilogram of the fuel. And finally, our heat balance sheet is this one. So we just um, calculate the percentages of the different heat so that you can see wh what portion uh, where the heat are going to. So as you can see, 76% of the heat are actually used by the steam generator. The, re the remaining 25, around 24% are lost. Guided problem solving number four. A gas turbine working on air standard Brighton cycle has air enter into the compressor at atmospheric condition and 22 degrees Celsius. The pressure ratio is 9 and the maximum temperature in the cycle is 1077 degrees Celsius. Compute for the cycle efficiency per kilogram of air in percent. So here we assume constant specific heats. So assuming air is an ideal gas with constant specific heat of which the value of K is 1.4. If we have, we assume constant specific heats, then we can directly use the formula for the Brighton cycle. So this is the, the shortcut formula in determining the cycle efficiency given the pressure ratio and the specific heat ratio. So our pressure ratio is given as nine. So we just substitute as well as the value of K so that our cycle efficiency is 46.62%. But take note, if there is a variation of specific heat, then we cannot use this formula. So we need to use work net over Q in or one minus Q out over Q in. Guided problem solving number five. In a gas turbine unit, air enters the combustion chamber at 550 kilopascal, 20, 227 degrees Celsius, and 43 meters per second. The products of combustion lead the combustor at 511 kPa and 1004 degrees Celsius and 140 meg meter per second. Liquid fuel enters with a heating value of 42,000 kilojoules per kilogram. For fuel air ratio of 0.0229, which is the combustor efficiency of the unit, in percent. So here we are referring to the, the amount of the fuel that is actually that leads, that is being used, that is the combustor efficiency. So we assume first that the, since it's also given in the problem, so the air is treated as ideal gas with constant specific heat. So the CP for air is 1.006 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So we're given here with the data from the entrance and the exit of the combustor. So our analysis now is 
here at point two to three where the combustion happens. So first, we need to calculate Q in. So our Q in can be computed using the um, the formula, the change of internal energy plus the change of kinetic energy. Here we neglect the change of potential energy. So we just take into account the change of internal energy and the change of kinetic energy. So for the change of internal energy, uh, we can use enthalpy. So that is H3 minus H2. So this is between 3 and 2. That's why it's H3 minus H2 plus 1, one half of V3 squared minus V2 squared, referring to the kinetic energy. So, since we are not given with H or enthalpy, and since this is an ideal gas with constant specific heat, we can use the temperature instead and the Cp. So, we transform H into Cp delta T. So, that's why we have it here as well as we just retain the kinetic energy. So, we substitute the value of Cp and temperatures. So, we have it here. So, if you can see, we use Cp, uh, we use delta H because this process here, 2 to 3, is a constant pressure process. So, instead of using Cv, we use Cp. That's why it's delta H. So, if it is constant volume, then we use Cv. But since it's constant pressure, that's why we have C. So, we substitute and take note that we have to convert the value here since as a result of this one, we will obtain meter squared per second squared. So we need to convert meter squared per second squared to kilojoules per kilogram using this conversion factor. So one kilojoules per kilogram is 1,000 meter squared per second squared. So our QN is 790.54 kilojoules per kilogram. So now that we have QN, we can get the combustor efficiency using the formula the Q that is um, absorbed by the the combustor combustor divided by the actual heat that you supply from the combustion of fuel so we are given with the mass of the fuel and its heating value we're also um, given with the mass uh, we can get also that we can get the mass of air mass of the fuel on the given which is the air fuel ratio and that is equals to um, 1 over 0 0.0229 so that's why instead of using mass air mass of the fuel we just use the mm, air fuel ratio so that's why we have here 0 0.0229 and then our QN is this value here that we computed and then the heating value which is given so our combustor efficiency is 80.28% meaning in the combustion process alone uh, 20% percent of the heat the cam heat from the fuel is lost and only 80 percent is absorbed and that's absorbed in the system guided problem solving number six there are required 2200 kilowatt net from a gas turbine of unit for pumping of crude oil Air enters the compressor section at 100 kPa and 200 kel 280 kelvin. The pressure ratio is 10. The turbine section received the hot gases at 1,100 kelvin. Assume the closed Brighton cycle and determine the required airflow. So we assume constant specific heats. So the given are, so the compressor section, the data are 280 kelvin and it enters the turbine section at 1,100 Kelvin based on the problem. The pressure ratio is 10. So first, we assume that air has is an ideal gas, so we can use a specific heat of Cp and K value. So the, the cycle efficiency can be computed using the formula. So that's 1 minus 1 over K minus 1, RP over K1 minus 1 over K. So we're given with the pressure rate of 10 and K1.4. So our cycle efficiency is 0.4821. So next, 
we need to calculate the temperature at point two using isentropic process relationship. So this point two here, we need to calculate this one. So that's equal to T2 is equal to T1 RP K minus one over T. So this is the isentropic relationship of temperatures. And since we're given with a pressure ratio, so that is P that's in terms of T. So that's why it's K minus one over K. So we substitute those values so that our T2 is 540.6 Kelvin. So take note that you should use thermodynamic temperature scale here. So we can determine the required airflow using the formula thermal efficiency is equal to work net over Q in. And since our Q in is equal to MCT T3 minus T2 as we can see here. So this is a constant pressure process of heat addition. So it's set MCT T3 minus T2. So if we are going to rearrange this one, our mass which is required in the problem or the mass flow rate of air can be computed as work net over uh, thermal efficiency multiplied by Cp and uh, delta T. That is why we first solve for the efficiency and uh, temperature T2. Since work net is given as 2200 kW and T3 is 1100 Kelvin, so we just substitute those values and then we can calculate the mass and that is 8.11 kg per second. So the required airflow is 8.11 kg per second. Guided problem solving number 7. A gas turbine power plant operating on ideal Brighton cycle has pressure ratio of 8. The gas temperature is 300 Kelvin at the compressor inlet and 1,300 Kelvin at the turbine inlet. For, um, we are accounting for the variation of specific heat with temperature. We are to determine the gas temperature at the exit of the compressor and the exit of the turbine, the back work ratio, and the thermal efficiency. So the exit of the compressor is at 0.2, the exit of the turbine is at 0.4. The back work ratio here refers to the amount of um, energy that you plug in again for the operation of the gas turbine power plant. The thermal efficiency is, of course, how efficient the system is. So here, we cannot assume um, constant specific heat since it is as stated in the problem that we are to account the variation of specific heat with temperature. So if that is the case, we cannot use the ideal gas relationship, but we need to use Fabon. So we cannot use the MCB delta T, the P1, V1 over T1 is equals to constant, and those relationships in terms of temperature, but we need to use table to get the enthalpies. So we need to determine the tables, we need to determine the enthalpies using table A17. That is the properties of air. So at point one, we are to solve um, H1 as H at 300 Kelvin. So using the table that's 300.19 kilojoules per kilogram. We need also to solve PR1 since we can use PR1 later on to get the value at point two. So PR1 is equal to um, PR at 300 Kelvin, and that is 1.386 based also in the table. So that is a dimensionless number, that's a pan field number. For process one to two, so as we can see here, we have process one to two. So the pressure ratio is given as eight. So we can use that relationship between P. This relationship is the same for both P and the Francial number. So that's why we can use P2 over P1 is just equal to PR2 over PR1. That's the reason why we need to get the Francial number. And those ratio is equal to the pressure ratio. So our PR2 is RP multiplied by PR1. And since PR1 is 1.386 and the RP is 8, so our PR2 is 11.10. So at point 2, we can use this PR2 to get the enthalpy at point 2. So the enthalpy at point 2 is the enthalpy at PR2, which is 11.10. And based on the table, that is 544.35 kilojoules per kilogram. So the first unknown is to determine the temperature at the exit of the compressor, which is also at point 2. That's why we'll use uh, the frontal number to get the temperature at point 2. That is the temperature at PR2. 
in the same way that we, we get the enthalpy. So the temperature at point two is 540 Kelvin. So therefore, the temperature at the the, the gas temperature at the X state of the compressor is 540 Kelvin. So from 300 Kelvin, it is compressed to 3, 4, 540 Kelvin. So this is how we got the value at point one using the temperatures, enthalpy, the Prandtl number. Same also at point C. We have temperature, enthalpy, and the Prandtl number. So if, if the value is not here, then we have to interpret. So next at point three. So at point three, we got H3 as H at the given temperature at point three, which is 1,300 Kelvin. So we have this enthalpy here. In the same way, we also need to get Pr3 so that we can get Pr4. And in the same way, the relationship for the isentropic process P4, the pressure ratio is equal to P3 over P4. That is actually the same because there are only two pressure limits here. And that is equal to this one. So our PR4 is 41.36. So if we have PR, we can now get the value of enthalpy at 0.4 as well as the, 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 the gas temperature at the exit of the turbine. So at the exit of the turbine, the temperature of the gas is 770.25 Kelvin. So as you can see, this is still um, a huge amount of, a large amount of temperature that is 770.25 Kelvin. That is also the reason why gas turbine, uh, gas cycle are actually used as um, also in combined cycle with steam uh, cycle. So we can use this exhaust temperature to run the boiler of our um, uh, vapor of our cycle. So the gas temperature at the exit of the turbine is 770.25 Kelvin. So this is how we got uh, the, the units, the values at point 3 and at point 4 using the table. So now we can calculate for the compressor work. So the compressor work is just equals to H2 minus H1. So as you can see, we're not using temperatures, but we're using enthalpies to get the work because we account for the variation on specific heat. So we have it here. So that's 244.16 kilojoules per kilogram. For the turbine work, that is H3 minus H4, the difference of enthalpy in the turbine, and that's 606.6 .6 kilojoules per kilogram. So the back work ratio is just equals to the ratio of the compressor work to the turbine work. So that means that in the total amount of work to produce in the turbine, some of that, um, the percentage of that is actually used again to run the compressor. And the back work ratio is 0.403%. So 40.3% of the work that we produce in the turbine is being utilized again for the operation of the compressor. And finally, for the thermal efficiency, we cannot use our uh, shortcut formula for the Brighton because we are we don't have a constant K. So K is not constant value here because uh, this is accounting for the variation of specific heat. That's why we need to use work net over Q. Work net is equal to the work of the turbine means work of the compressor divided by the Q in, which is equal to H3 minus H2. So our thermal efficiency for this Brighton cycle is 42.6%. So that is how we analyze um, the different external combustion engines.